Hi, welcome back to part four of the Odin tutorial series. Today this is about memory allocation and manual memory management. Odin has full memory management but it is very streamlined. Uh, by default variables will be on the stack. This is the base memory given to you by the operating system. So if you create something like this, value equals one, this is a temporary stack variable. Uh, these are temporary variables that will be invalid when out of scope. So if we wait an if statement and put the index inside that, and then try to print the index after the curly brace, this will basically be garbage data or could give you errors. Uh, basically, you don't want to use a variable when it's out of scope, when it's ended, when it's been cleared. Sometimes it's not cleared, but it basically means that it's invalid memory that you shouldn't access now. So this can give potential errors as the variable index is taken off the stack. Stack variables last until the next curly brace, then will be overwritten. So heap variables are extra memory in RAM that the operating system needs to give you. To create a new heap variable, we <clears throat> use a pointer with the new keyword. So here we create a variable new, just an integer, and we set the variable. Uh, and this is a pointer. So a pointer is basically a the pointing up, like literally you're pointing to it. Then we have to free the memory. And generally what we use is defer, because defer is just better. It's just the most safest way because you make the memory, free the memory. You don't always want to use defer, it depends on the situation. Uh, I'll go into that a bit later. But most of the time you're going to free the memory because it will stay there until the program ends or until it crashes if you don't free it. So this is a pointer in Odin. It's a variable that stores a memory address. In this situation, it is pointing to the memory address of the heap variable. So with everything Odin, you create variables to the left and access the values on the right, for example. In this here we create an array. The array, this creating the array, we put the brackets, square brackets on the left. And we access the array with them on the right. And it's the same with pointers, as I said before. So we put the array size to the left of the type when creating the variable. We put the array, the array on the right when accessing it. I'll put the square brackets on the right when accessing it. It's the same with pointers, so the pointers do the same. So creating it, accessing it. Arrays are made with the same syntax. So arrays are exactly the same. You basically just put square brackets int and it's an array. So this will be a pointer to a block of a, an array, basically. Uh, this creates 10 integers on the heap with memory uh, memory address of the first element. To access a heap array, you do this. So we basically pointer then the square brackets. It accesses the index. So first we set it and then we access it later. So the defer keyword will run whatever code you want at the end of scope. So the next after the next curly brace, it will run that. Also, it basically I believe it what like the first one you run will be the last one to run. So if you put four defers it will run the first one last. It's basically in uh, top to bot uh, bottom to top is how it runs. So it's best practice to put a defer and delete the memory right after you create it. This will prevent potential memory leaks. So here I'm gonna create an array and I'm just gonna leave it. This is called a memory leak. If you don't like, if you basically, if you create some, uh, if you create some heap variable in a function and then just leave the function, you need to pass a pointer to it and and clear it basically is what you need to do. If you just like create a func uh, some array, some heap in a function and you never pass a reference to it, never delete it in the function, it will stay there forever. So we'll basically, here we will have a memory leak and a thousand integers will be taken up by the program until it crashes or the program ends. So to fix this, uh, we can return the pointer to the array. So we return the pointer to that array and then we free it in main. However, you should never do this. So here, what I'm doing is I'm creating the heap array, I'm defer deleting it, and then I'm returning it. What this will do is it will return it, and then you free it. So what are you pointing to anymore? You've, you've cleared it. This is what we call a dangling reference. So a dangling pointer or a dangling reference, you're basically pointing to something that doesn't exist anymore. So this will probably give you a seg fault if you try and access it. Um, and it's, yeah, it's not a good thing to do. So you'll probably get a segmentation fault. And a segmentation fault basically is when you access memory that you shouldn't outside of the program. Alternatively, you can return a slice to the array. So here, just exactly the same, but we're returning a slice, which is basically a pointer with a length. However, with slices, we use different functions. So single variables and arrays, we use new and free. For slices, dynamic arrays and maps, I'll go through maps later. Um, we basically use make and delete. So it's the same, it's just a different keyword basically. So if you make a slice, you have to use delete and not free. If you get a pointer slice or 
string back from a function, you'll need to free the memory. Many functions in the core library will require you to do this. For example, on the last episode, we have this combined equals we can catalyze two strings together. We have to delete it because a string is basically a pointer with a length. So it, if you basically go to another function, you create something and get a string back, you need to delete it because there's no other way of doing it. Unless you pass something to the, well, I'll go through that a bit later. You can pass a buffer to the, to the function and then get a string back and then you don't have to delete it. But that's a bit different. So this is because to safely get a pointer back from a function, either you need to heap allocate, so the memory still exists, or you need to pass a reference to the data going into the function. Onto the examples. So first I'm going to show you just reading from a file. And reading from a file, you normally need to allocate on um, and delete and close stuff. Uh, so with file example, so we have the file path, which is just example.txt. I've but just put some random lines in that. Uh, file data string equals read from file. So we read from the file and we return a string, which is the data. But we'll have to defer delete the file data because it's basically, so we have the data here. I believe this uh, will be on the heap. So we create it on the heap, so we have the, basically the responsibility to delete it. And then we a string is basically a pointer to that, so we can use the string to delete it. And uh, basically a string is just a, a slice, basically. So we need to use delete and not free. Uh, so basically here, we're reading from the file. We get the data from the file. We defer delete it, so we cleared here. Then we basically want to just print each line. That's all I'm doing, just printing each line. I'll show you what this looks like. I mean, it's basically just like something like, uh, yeah, hello world, this is an example text file. Each line contains some text. Text files could be any length, so we normally allocate memory. Just random lines, so it's showing you how to basically open a file. We use OS, so core OS at the top. OS read entire file. We say if it's okay, it basically returns, uh, if I go here, I'm not sure if it shows you. Okay, it's not working now. Some Odin is very finicky with this. Sometimes I can open the function, sometimes I can't. Basically what it, what it returns is a uh, slice of data. I believe it's a slice. Uh, and then a bool, if it's okay or not. So was it okay? Was the, there a good memory? Uh, basically, did it open the file correctly? If false, then error, basically. And I'll just return a string with the error reading file because it's not an error code. It just says fail or not. Uh, then I'm just going through each. So split line iterator is in strings. So this basically will give you, I believe, a slice of strings. So it's like one slice is one line, another slice is the next line. It's a slice of strings. So it line in strings and we just print each line using printf. And that's basically how you open a file and read from it. But this is normally a key example of when you want to delete stuff. Uh, you want to defer, defer delete here, not here. This will give you errors. But we're going to go through that now. So I have a load of examples here. I'll just comment this out. Examples. So examples just links to all these. So show example one. We'll do this first. So show example one. Let me zoom in. Okay. Show example one. We have print line slice one. And we're getting a slice, an integer slice, which is basically like like this. Uh, the the type is this, so it's a slice, slice of integers uh, from example one. And then we're going to print it using this function here, print in slice, which basically just prints zero to five in that slice, uh, and that's all we're doing. So we go to example one. So here we create an array and then we return a slice to it. So we're creating an array of 10 and just put one to 10. And we want a slice of basically this to the end. So look at this and tell me if this is the right way to do it or not. So I guess you could pause it. You can look at this, read it. So let's run this and see what happens. So basically we've got garbage data. Why do we get garbage data? Because it's a, it's a temporary stack variable. So we're creating a temporary stack variable and then we're passing a slice to the temporary stack variable with these elements. But we're returning a slice, basically a pointer to temporary stack memory. The problem with, with temporary stack memory is when it goes to this curly brace, it will be cleared. It won't be overwritten. 
it'll be overwritten. Basically, it's like you you just take the reference away and then you overwrite it with other code. Obviously, we go and create another function. We uh, create more things on the stack. So eventually it gets overwritten and becomes garbage data. So this is just garbage data, what we're printing now. So example one is not the way to do it. You can't return a slice with temporary stack memory. There is a way to do that actually with stack memory. It's just, I'll show that later. So example two, what do we do in example two? In example two, we create new, a heap memory, keep memory, and then we basically return a pointer to that. And what else do we do in example two? And we defer delete the slice. All right, let's show example two. So yeah, so example two, I'll just show you again. So we create a heap array. We set it, set the values, and then just print a slice. We return a slice of five to the end. And then I'll show the show example what we do here. We delete the slice. Let's see what happens when we do this. So what do you think will happen when we do this? So I'll show you example two again, create the heap, set it, return the slice, and then we defer delete the slice at the end. Let's have a look what happens when we run two. So we actually got the uh, correct results. Um, the problem with this is we're gonna have a memory leak. Um, so we are, a slice is basically, it's like if I show the first example, we're, we're slicing this, sending that back to the function and then deleting this. So we're deleting this data, but we're not deleting this data. So we have a memory leak. So this will be a memory leak, this will be freed. This is the problem with returning a slice um, from a function is you have these problems. If I defer delete here, it's only deleting half the data. So I'm getting a memory leak and it's gonna be taken up uh, by the, the operating system until I've, well, I, until the program ends. So example two is not the way to do it. And we have example three. What are we doing example three? So show example three, doing exactly the same, no defer delete here. So in example three, Here we're creating another array, another heap array. And then we're we're setting the values and then we're freeing. What's wrong with doing this? I've kind of already told you what's wrong with doing this. Um, let's see what happens with uh, the third example. Let's do show example three. So that does actually print through the correct results. even though it probably shouldn't. I'm not actually sure why uh, this example works because it should actually give you an error, a segmentation fault when you do this. Um, because here we're creating heap memory and then we're freeing the heap memory and we're returning a reference to something that doesn't exist now. Maybe, uh, I'm not sure exactly why that works because it should give you an error, <laughs> uh, but that's not the way to do it. That's that. This could give you a lot of errors. It doesn't give you an error here, but it probably should. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why that didn't work, but basically you don't want to uh, do it that way. So number four is actually the way you want to do this. We're trying to get a slice from an array. That's what we're doing. Uh, the problem is basically what you need to do is create the array outside the function because this array will last until here. This array will last until the next curly brace. So here we, we create the inter array. It lasts until this. Then we send it to this function and then we print it. And then it doesn't exist here. So it's completely fine. We're not, are not, we have no problems doing this. So example four, example four, again, so we put the array in as a, as a slice. So this is a slice. So it's a pointer. That's way, that way we can actually uh, access it, I believe. All right, so we create the array with empty values. We send it to example four. We set the values in this and then we uh, return the slice basically. Let's show example four. For example, for six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so that was accurate, that's what we wanted. So this is the way to do it. If you want to return a slice from a function from an array, you need to send the array to the function. Otherwise, you're just gonna get errors. You're not gonna, you're not gonna fully delete the, uh, the array during this is the problem. Um, it, well, it, this is basically, this, the only reason this is a problem is because we're getting it, we're returning a partial slice. So we're not, if you returned a full slice, Say, what's a good example, like the second one. 
So in slice two, what we should do here, uh, let's go example two, sorry. Example, if I just simply did this and just return the whole slice, it would be fine. But because we're getting a partial slice, it won't free all of the memory and we get a memory leak. So this is only really an issue when we're returning a partial slice. If you just did this, it would be absolutely fine and there'd be no reason. And then uh, example, um, sorry, not example one, but example two. So example two like this. And then when we free it, we're actually freeing the entire memory because we're giving a slice to the whole of the memory. But if you return a partial slice, you get problems. But manual manual memory management is quite difficult. It can be hard to get used to. It's a lot easier in you know garbage collected languages. You don't get this these issues. But there's a reason why we why we manually manage memory is because we get more performance. And generally, in like say game development or any kind of software where you need like like maybe audio software or video editing software, you want to control when this happens so that you make sure you get as max performance as possible. But that's all for this video. That's basically how to manually manage memory in Odin. Uh, there are There is a more advanced way of doing this, which is with custom allocators, which I'll go through in a later episode. This is basically, generally, you just keep the same, the regular default allocator, and they just use new, free, and create and delete. Uh, but there are custom allocators, a, there are custom allocators you can use. There's also a tracking allocator, which I actually way, made a way of tracking the amount of memory you're allocating which I'll show you later. But this is just a simple introduction of uh, allocating memory. Let me know if you have any questions and see you guys next time.